it's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. When you wake up in the morning, do you go outside and take a big, deep breath of fresh air? Isn't it wonderful? <sighs> I live in Sarasota, Florida, and in the mornings, it's still cool. So that air just feels so fresh when I breathe it in. And my neighbor to the right of me has a dog. It's stocky and it's short, you know, mostly white hair, some gray patches on his chest and his ears. Oh, I mean the dog, not my neighbor. <laughs> the neighbor's really good at cleaning up after his dog, mostly. Every now and then he misses a poop or two. But I don't really notice in the mornings when I take that breath of fresh air. Now my neighbors, two doors to the left of me, they have two dogs. They've got a black shaggy kind of mutt and a golden retriever. Beautiful, beautiful. And they're also really good about cleaning up after their pooches, except when they're not. And every now and then there's a poop or two. But again, when I, tell you, when I go outside and take that deep breath of air in the morning, I don't notice, I don't smell anything, I can't tell, because there's all that air, there's all that space. But now imagine that scattered poop all gathered together in a closet with you. Would you be able to breathe? What if you couldn't open the door? What if there was no way out? What if the closet was invisible and nobody knew you were trapped in a closet with all that poop? Would you tell anyone? Or would you try to ignore it? And if you tried to ignore it, the poop starts to rise. Poop gets about your waist. Would you be able to still breathe? What if it rose to your shoulders and it started to creep up your neck? And then you look up and you see there's a way out of the invisible closet. So you climb up. You don't know what's going to happen. You might fall, but you can jump. And you're free. And you're dead. That's what it's like when you're struggling with suicidal thinking. According to the Center for Disease Control, 25% of the young Americans in the United States are struggling to stay alive. 25%, one out of four. Now we live in one of the greatest places in the world. On June 1st, 2023, the government of the United States of America designated $5.6 million for programs to reduce youth suicides on campuses among tribal nations in certain states. $5.9 million to serve the 25% of our kids who are struggling to stay alive. But what about the other 75%? What about the ones who don't talk about it? Here's what we've learned after thousands of talks. The talk that saves lives is specifically designed for the 75%. It's like an interview. And for the last three years, we've been conducting these interviews, and here's what we've learned. <sighs> you can't tell by looking. You can't tell by looking who's struggling to stay alive. You can't tell by looking who's grieving the loss of a loved one. And this is important because every single one of those programs that is being funded by that $5.9 million has an entrance requirement. You have to know they're in trouble. You have to know that they're at risk. They have to have a mental health diagnosis or a previous attempt. The rest of them struggle in silence. The saddest words in the world are the ones I hear the most often when I have this talk. And it's, we didn't see it coming. We live in a day and an age where often the first sign that someone's in trouble is an attempt and they don't all survive. I got lucky, my daughter did. And when we decided to work together after she broke the silence in 2019, we thought we knew how to solve the problem. We thought teaching people how to have the talk that saves lives before they think someone needs it would solve the problem. We could suicide proof the world and what we found out, the world doesn't wanna be suicide proofed. The stigma about talking about suicide is still so deep 
that no one really wants to engage with this talk. They'll have that talk with me, but they don't want to have to talk about it with anybody else. So we decided to go and study what causes that poop in the closet? What causes it to get deeper? And I never thought I'd be an expert in poop, but over the last three years, I have become an expert in poop. Here's what we've learned. Poop is universal. Everybody has some. We also learned that poop is, <laughs> oh my goodness, it's personal, which is why we don't want to talk about it. Poop is personal. Poop also grows when you don't talk about it. Poop grows when you ignore it. When you try not to think about a thought, what happens? If I said, don't think about a dancing white elephant, what just happened? Did a prancing pale pachyderm just come across the stage with me? When we try not to think about a thought, we double down on the thought. And our subconscious mind is elegantly designed to bring about what we think about. It works really well. It's the law of attraction and action, unless the thought you're thinking about is not thinking about suicide. And then your subconscious mind goes to work just as it would if it was something you wanted, and it starts making plans. Subconscious plans starts looking for opportunities. And with our kids, all it takes is a subconscious plan to cross an opportunity, and they're gone. And they wake up in emergency rooms, some of them do, and say they don't know what happened. And they're telling the truth. And that's why all of the programs that are out there that have this pre-entry requirement that focus on safety contracts and on the idea of you're already struggling, let's get it to stop. They're useful, they're needed, and they're not enough. And we know they're not enough because the number keeps rising. And it's not just teens, it's also veterans. It's all, every other age group. Veterans have gone from 22 deaths a day to suicide to 27 in the last two years. So what we discovered about poop is that while you can't prevent someone from getting poop because we get it from the perspectives of other people when we're really young, too young to make conscious decisions, there's a way to get rid of the poop. It's not having a talk with someone else though. We tried that. You get rid of the poop by changing your self-talk. Reverse perspective self-talk. Reverse perspective self-talk is specifically designed, it's neuro-based, just like the talk that saves lives, it's based in neuroscience. The first statement is designed to activate all of the energy, all of the emotion you have around the events of your past on a specific topic, because the other thing we found out about poop, I forgot to tell you, it's topic-centric. There are four main topics we've identified that create the most poop in our mental closets. First topic, money. The emotion, guilt, the concern that I've wasted it. The second topic is time. The emotion is regret. The concern is that I lost it. The third topic is information and education. The emotion is judgment. The concern is that it's useless. And the fourth topic is other people and their behaviors. And the emotion is blame. And the concern is that I'll be judged myself. There's, and let's face it, there's enough blame right now to go around. These four statements that break this for you. I would love to find out if it works for you. So I'm going to give you the first reverse perspective statement on the topic of money. I'm going to repeat it to activate that neuro web that you already have, that neural network. And then we're going to couple it with the connecting one, the choice-based statement. All you have to do is just listen. Here we go on the topic of money. Every penny I've ever spent was well spent. How does that land for you? Every penny I've ever spent was well spent. Does that ring true for you? Here's the entire piece now. Every penny I've ever spent was well spent, even if I would not choose to spend a penny that way today. 
Is that more true? Let's try the other one, time. Every second I've ever lived was well lived. Is that true for you? Is that ringing true? Every second I've ever lived was well lived. The whole sentence now, now that we've activated your sense of time, every second I've ever lived was well lived, even if I would not choose to live a second that way today. A little more true? On the topic of education, information, every word you've ever read, every word a teacher ever said was useful, true for you? Every word you've ever read, every word a teacher ever said was useful, even if you would not choose to listen to that or read that today. A little more true. And the last one, by the way, most poop is from the perspective of other people, P-O-O-P. -O -O -P. Perspective of other people is what causes the poop in the first place. So let's go there. Ready? Every person I've ever met enriched my life in some way. Every person I've ever met enriched my life in some way. Is that true for you? Every person I've ever met enriched my life in some way. Even if I would not choose to spend a second with them today. Little more you. Here's what we know to be true. When you use a reverse perspective statement, when you activate that neural network and you partner it with a choice statement, you are pulling all of that electrical activity from the old neural pathway and redirecting it and grounding it in the new perspective and your brain never goes back to the way it was. And the benefit of this, it opens the door to that mental closet. It allows fresh air to come in because all poop is based in your past. And what do we want for you? To be present. We want you to be here with us right now. And what I want for you to do is to promise that you will look for the perspective shifts. Look towards optimism. Bring out, instead of poop, bring out your inner poo, the power of optimism and hope, and then share your poo with the world. Remember, you can't tell by looking who's struggling. So don't be afraid to share your poo with the world, the power of your optimism and hope. We believe. Heaven doesn't need another angel. Heaven knows we need them and you to stay right here.